Hi right, and welcome to, I think we're on part three of our color along. I am a little bit behind, things have been crazy. So let's just dive on in. So we're working in Kirby Rosanne's Myth and Mafia and we are working on this fire dragon. Can't tell if we're focused enough here, but let me just put up my uh, uh, webcam settings anyways because I forgot to do that. So, where are they? I do really like how this is looking on the camera, although it's not quite so vibrant in person, but Okay, let's see. I want if and yeah, I don't want autofocus, thank you. Hopefully the color is okay. It looks good, I think. I think we're good. Okay, so, <clears throat> I'm so excited to color this. Okay, I think I wanna start tackling the dragon. That's one thing I forgot was my pencil sharpener. I don't need that. I kind of have to play Jenga with my desks when I record, so everything's a little bit out of reach, not as easily accessible as everything else. Hopefully the mic's okay. I have the volume right down on it, and it's, I have it far away from me, but my computer shows that it still sometimes picks up like really loud sounds, so hopefully it's okay. Um, I had my colors here picked out too, like forever ago. It's been a while since I've gotten back to this, so I gotta figure out what colors went where. I know those are the fire colors. Those are probably the red colors for the dragon. So these are probably the actual dragon colors. Let's go in and okay. Oops. Let's grab this one first. Also, I am wearing a sweater. It is freezing in my house right now warmer outside than it is in here. Fall is definitely on the way. Okay. Um, I don't think I'm quite ready for a pencil extender for this guy yet because that'll make me sad. Let's bring it closer a bit here. Make sure we're still focused. I think we're good there, hopefully. Okay, so let's come in with their dioxazine purple hue, and I'm gonna start just lightly popping this in here. I kind of want to keep this closer to like where all of our shadows are going to be. That's my plan. So let's attempt to do that. If this gets too awkward to color with, I'm going to have to put it in a pencil extender, but I really don't want to. Because then I know it's getting really small and that makes me sad. You can definitely tell this is like one of my most used pencils. I do have another set thanks to Miss Melody that I still haven't opened yet. I haven't had to quite yet, but I haven't been coloring a whole lot either, so that is probably why. It's neat seeing a different color in here other than the oranges and the grays, but I don't really count those as colors. I mean they are, but they kind of more blend. I think behind his wing here, like on this side of his wing, would probably be the darkest. I'm not going to push hard or anything yet, I'm just kind of 
to baby on shadows. I'm still just lightly basing. I will let you know if that changes. So we're just basing and kind of fading out a little bit. Um, so I definitely want this part of his room to look like it's behind because it is. So those will be kind of darker areas. So probably mix maybe some of the 90% either warm or cool gray, I can't remember. Um, probably mix some of that in there. I don't think I want to go like black, black. I don't want to make anything too dark. Okay. <laughs> Love you. I also don't want to overshadow this either and have it too dark. Was whispering in the door. This would be shadowed on this side. And this one the opposite side maybe. I don't know. I'm just winging it. Definitely want to get this wing colored. Mainly because it's the one that's kind of by the binding of the book and it's really annoying to try and color there because it's really hard to kind of fade off and all that fun stuff. It's just like really awkward trying to do anything. have much for shadows up here. I don't know how I feel about that. Um, we've got these, which I guess, you know, Kirby does have a little bit of kind of line shading here, so I assume that's meant to be in shadow a little bit, even though it's really close to fire, so that kind of makes no sense to me. But. And I think, I feel like there needs to be like some kind of shadow. That is, I think I might just extend this one. Let's kind of create our own shadow here. We'll like fade it off there. Kind of like a little divot here and then maybe curl it around. I don't know, this might end up looking bad, but it's just too empty up here. I don't like that. I'll make it darker in this little spot here. And fade it out. Let's maybe add just like one more little spot here. We'll bring those in together. Mm, yep, yeah, okay. Maybe shade under the playing card here. This guy's mouth. I'm basically going to do the wing from everywhere that comes in from behind his head. And we'll focus on that. We'll finish that completely and then we can work on the rest of him. I think we're still in pretty decent focus. So now let's start adding a little bit of depth. I'm not going to fully um, burnish this because I do want to make it darker, but I I just want to start working on that kind of fade out from the shadows. So 
So maybe darken this color coming out a little bit further, I think. And then this, I think, is part of the wing too. Maybe darken that up. Some of these random lines here that just kind of seem to be a little bit more obvious. They kind of stand out to me, so I feel like they should be a little bit darker. We got a Miss Lilo at the door. other colors we've got here. Black grape is a good one to throw in. And then it was the warm gray that I picked. Because I wanted something a little bit warmer since all of the other colors are super warm. So let's let me grab that and sharpen it. You want that again already? You can't jump up. No, you gotta stay down. No. No, Lilo, no. No, honey, I'm sorry. Why don't you put me on the chair? Go have a nap. Look. Go up here. Up here. Oh, come on. No, you can't go on the table, though. You can sit on my back. Up. Knock stuff off the desk. Thank you. Okay, so let's go in with our 70% warm gray. So coming in with 70% warm gray. We'll see if this is dark enough. If not, we might have to add black, which I'm thinking it looks like we will, because I think I do definitely want this darker. It just isn't quite cutting it for me. It'll be okay for like medium shadows, but for our darker shadows, I definitely want it darker. But let's just throw some in here anyways, because we can. And then we'll just go over top and add some black in and kind of fade it out after. Welcome back, kitty cat. You still not stand up here. Okay. I'm gonna grab the black. There we go. So let's come in with the black. Basically right underneath this wing and then we're gonna bring it out a little bit. I want to shade a little bit darker under his face too, just so his face really pops. So it's kind of going around his face. So he's got such a beautiful face. I really, really want to showcase that and make it stand out. Do 
zoom in a little bit more for you guys. I say zoom, but it's more a matter of moving the camera. these darker shadows up here as well. Not too much. Mostly in where Kirby has these darker lines that kind of show that it's pretty shadowed. Hmm. My camera's picking up everything the hubs is doing outside. Almost good for our shadows. Let's maybe make the cards stand out a little bit more. I don't think I want to darken up by the flames too much. I'll keep them as a shadow because Kirby has it kind of drawn in like it is, but it doesn't really make sense to me. So I'm just gonna kind of leave it like that. So let's go in with our. Oh, oh, oh. I think I wanted the 90%, not the 70%. That was probably my problem, but I do like how the black looks anyway. So let's just continue on with the 70%. So I'm just going to bring this out from the black. And we'll just kind of fade it out as we go. With no rhyme or reason, we're just kind of winging it, as always. Winging it on the wing. And everything else. Because that is how we roll, or is it fly? Okay, I'm done. Sorry. Dad jokes. <laughs> My family has a thing with puns. So I make them up on the fly. Please don't hate me. <laughs> okay. kind of working quick because I don't know what I'm doing and if I work slow then I tend to kind of overthink things and then that's actually when I usually end up ruining stuff so I find if I work a little bit quickly and just make split second decisions which usually I would advise everybody not to do I find that usually works better for me <laughs> I never said it makes sense but it works for some reason. Okay. All right, I'm really liking this. I can't wait to get some more color into it, though.
right? I'm using are really weird so maybe if I uh, kind of order them from darkest to lightest maybe that'll help me figure out what I'm supposed to use <laughs> um, the only problem is, is I've got purple reds and red reds like purple purple reds uh, red purples and blue purples is what I meant to say okay, um, so that one and then that one that one is probably but evenly matched there. A lot of these colors are very similar. So let's keep the blue purples on one side and the red purples on the other side. There's more red purples. Okay. <laughs> let's go in with, I actually don't think we'll really need the black grape. I think we can probably get by without that one. For now, we'll see. We might bring it in. But I do think I want to come in with black cherry. Since we've got more red purples, that's obviously what I was going for. So let's get some reds going on in here so we can blend into them. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the shadows more of like a blue-toned purple, and then maybe we'll do like... Kind of like the areas that hit the light more as like red toned purples. So I'm going to go in with the black cherry. I'm going to pop this just lightly over our shadows and bring it out a ways. I don't know quite how far I'm going to bring it out yet. Maybe just a little bit for now and we'll see how it goes and what it looks like. I think what I need to do is just fully color in an area so I can stop worrying that this isn't going to turn out good. So let's just kind of focus on this area here. Let's just color this whole thing in and see. So I'm a little bit worried this might end up looking too dark. But I do like how it's looking at the same time, so I don't know. And I don't know what to do with this part. Maybe let's add a little bit of a shadow just along the edge. I don't know. Let's do that and see what that looks like. So that was the black cherry. So next, I think we're going to come in with the dark purple. Same thing, just going to lightly pop that over everything. It's going to blend our colors together. It's also going to help burnish our shadows quicker without having to do um, without having to add more darkness to them because I already like the depth that we've got. Here's the dark purple. I think I'm going to go 
straight in with the seashell pink, though I'm going to skip a few colors here. Just because, for one, I'm running out of room, and two... I think that the, a lot of those colors are kind of redundant because they're just similar tones of the same color. So I'm going to come in with the seashell pink, and I think I'm going to use this to as like a final blending layer for our shadows. I'm just going to give it like this creamy kind of look, which I really like. Lightly blend into these fades here because this is going to have to fade into the flames. So maybe you just color this top bit in. This watercolor is hmm, not as easy to go over as I had hoped, even like here with the dark black, it's not really going over. So I'm, I can't say that I'm a Fan of that, I might have to figure something else out for the fire. Um, but I do like this. It even though we added those purple, those reddish purples, it's still looking a little bit more purple than I would hope for. It's not completely burnished yet. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in with the raspberry. I'm just going to lightly go over some of this to put some red tones in here. That looks pretty good. I like that. Let's actually bring in, oops, a little bit of the raspberry up here too, fade it out. Go back to the seashell pink, I'm going to go over top of that and fade that out as well. I'm going to leave a little bit of a, a highlight there though. And then I'm going to finish that off with the eggshell. Not bad, I don't mind that. So let's continue on the rest of the wing. Um, I think starting with the black cherry. So let's come in around, we'll do the same thing, we'll come in around these shadows with this.
hopefully give us a little bit of a shadow here without it blending into the back of the wing too much. It's a little bit dark right now, but once we go over with the seashell pinks and the beigey colors, it should be okay. Hopefully. So let's just carry on. It never fails, rains in the wind of lawn. <laughs> I'm going to add a little bit of the black cherry on these bits as well, just a little bit lighter. Just so it's on there. There's a little bit of shadow to them, but it doesn't blend in with the, the darker shadow. side of the wing I think we're just gonna kind of create a dark shadow along the side of it This is actually looking really cool. I am so looking forward to seeing this finished. I'm a little bit worried that we'll have to do an extra part though because there is a lot of detail. This might have been a better one to do for like a five week month, but we might just, I'm already late posting the first one anyways. It's supposed to be posted today, but I'm not done recording. <laughs> um, so maybe we'll just throw in an extra one the end of the month maybe. Um, okay, so after that I think we move to a dark purple. So let's pop a little bit of this in. doing is just 
kind of blending the dark purple and the black cherry in together. But I'm not really bringing it out any further than or anything. Just kind of like the, the color that those two make together. I'm a little too dark there, but that's okay. Didn't mean to, it's that whole... The paper's just not as easy to work with over here. It's because of the binding. Super annoying, but we're almost done with the closer bits to it anyways. I might come in and throw a little bit of a darker color on this edge. I'm not sure yet. I feel like it should be a little bit darker, but I also kind of like how it's looking, so I don't know if I want to mess with it. Ugh, the struggle. I think it'd be nice for some contrast. Yeah, I think I'm going to. Um, just with the dioxazine purple hue though, I think. I think that one should be dark enough and it'll add a little bit of that purple contrast so it'll tie it into the shadows of the wings. So I'm gonna be careful, I get just the tip. The tippy top of this line here. on this bottom piece here as well. Perfect. It went down too far. I'm used to having to move my page over, so this is going to take like a, a lot of getting used to. Okay, the last color we used was the dark purple, and I put my colors out of order. So I think next we just went straight to the seashell pink. I'm gonna try and leave a little bit of a highlight at the very top for the um, the eggshell. But for the most part, I'm gonna blend these shadows all together. I'm not fully burnishing it quite yet, so we still want to come in with that uh, raspberry.
this color will be a pretty good transition color to the, the yellows of the fire. They're kind of on bits and pieces of this guy. Did we add... I can't remember if we added the dark purple down here, but it, it doesn't look like it, so... Just on the off chance that we didn't, I'm going to risk adding a little bit more. Like that there. So then we'll come in with our raspberry. Let's just add a little bit of this to make the wings match. What well, wing we match the, the top and bottom parts of the wing. Adding this little bit of, of raspberry really does change it up quite a bit, actually. In a good way. I do like, I like the change. It's a very interesting color palette, that's for sure. I don't know why I have this in here when I don't even have that color. Okay. Uh, let's switch back to the dark purple here for a sec. Just want to bring this out a little bit on some of these like really light areas. Just because I feel like it's, it looks a little bit too light compared to the top bit. So I just want to darken up some of these shadow bits a little bit just so they it kind of balances them out, if that makes sense. This bit right here can probably just be colored in. Okay, that's a little better. Okay, and then we're going to come in with the eggshell. And then same as before. I'm going to go over these lighter bits.
And there is one wing done. This guy is gonna look so cool. I love him already. Okay, let's do the inside part of the wing here. Um, definitely wanna add a little bit more of the dioxazine purple hue. So I just wanna kinda come in and get this good layer. That way it's not lost when we add a couple of the reds. It definitely seems to be a very overpowering color. I do want to add the black cherry in. I'm going to stay away from the dark purple because we used that a lot on the front part of the wing, so not using that down here will kind of help keep it a little bit separate so it doesn't blend quite so much. So I'm just going to add the black cherry coming out from the shadows and just lightly over pretty much everything. And then, I don't really know any other way around this because I don't want to darken this up any or lighten it up any. So I think I'm just going to go in with my blender pencil and try and keep the color the same. I'm going to brush with this. Posca is going to be our best friend for those flames, or a Uniball Signo, or acrylic paint, or whatever equivalent you guys have. If you went over the lines with your uh, watercolor, if you went that method like I did. Now I'm a little bit worried that the front and back part of the wings look a little bit too different. I should have grabbed my uh, uh, mermaid brush, but the sleeve is the next best thing. And let's red that up a little bit. I don't... Maybe, oh, let's just leave it for now because there's been so many times where I'm like, I don't like that, let's change it. And then it's like, oh, I wish I would have left it like that. So, if when the picture's done I still don't like that, then I'll change it. Okay. We are already almost at an hour and we've only got half a wing done. Oh my goodness. Um. So let's do like an hour and a half-ish about uh, long parts for the this and the next part and we'll kind of see where we are after that and then maybe we'll just have to do a smaller like fifth part. Um, okay. Ooh, the schedule changes for next week. I'm not feeding you, so don't even ask. Okay, let's go in with our dioxazine a purple hue. Um, don't really want to add any shadows up there, but definitely want some here. So let's. I'm just going to color this part in here for the most part, I think. can't tell if these little pieces here are off of his face or... I feel like they are part of his face, so maybe let's just... I don't know. I, th I think they are. They look like they are. Um, 
and sleeveless for now. And just because it's pretty dark, I don't know if you guys can see what I'm talking about, but there's these two little spots like that. Kind of looks like they're, there's lines kind of separating them. I think that's part of the dragon's head. Dude, you need your nails trimmed. I can hear you cooking on the floor. Don't mind Stitch, he's got to dig in his water for whatever reason before he drinks it. We don't understand, we just love him. <laughs> okay, I think this part here would probably be a little bit shadowed from his head. So maybe let's kind of leave a highlight on both sides, but bring that down. Um, this would be kind of shadowed, might have made that a little too dark but it's shadowed at least. Um, right there would be shadowed. Um, I think that's probably okay there. shadow just at the top there to kind of hide that little semicircle thing because I don't know what it is. And then I can't quite remember for the shadows. I think we moved into the 70% and then we did the black. We'll kind of just try and follow the same steps so it all kind of looks uh, not the same but equivalent. Good though, so let's move in with the black, which I'm going to sharpen. Same thing, I'm going to go in around our guy's head here. I'm just going to completely kind of black out the square. John, I fade it out so that way it doesn't look like just some weird like black blurb. It's 
stitch, stop eating my paintbrushes. dark in at the tops and then fade it out. I've also got it a little bit darker along this kind of, I don't know what it would be called. I want to say vein but I don't know if that's right. I think it would be kind of dark on the other side as well so maybe let's add a little shadow to that too. Follow just a couple of these bigger lines just to Kind of create some interest, give the dragon's wing some texture. I'm going to darken up right along here and then fade that out. And then I do want to kind of darken up in this shadow here as well. I think that's probably okay. Um, how do I want to do this? Okay, we definitely need some more dioxazine. So I'm going to run this in along the side here and here. What are you doing? with you cats. You want nothing to do with me until I start recording. You can't bump into this stuff, but... Don't rub on that, please. Stitch, you can't go that way, babe. He's right near the microphone, so if he ends up sniffing it, hopefully I'll catch the sound and get it out of there. I don't know what he's doing. I don't think he knows what he's doing. Let's just check this stuff out, it looks like, I suppose. Scratch his cheek. Can you scratch your cheek, huh? You're cute, even though you're trouble. You're a troublemaker. Okay. Let's get back in with the 70% warm gray. Just want to kind of dilute a little bit with the darker shadow colors.
All right, so apologies if you can hear the lawnmower um, pretty loud at times. Brain has moved on to doing the front lawn, and I think he's already done in front of my window a couple passes, so it shouldn't be too, too loud, but um, you might still hear it. So I was going to use that recording to figure out uh, how long half an hour would have been, but we're restarting now, so we'll do half an hour more and then call it a day. So I'm just going to continue on in with the diaxosian purple hue just slightly, just a little bit here. We'll just go lightly, kind of base everything like we did before. I know we did it later on in our steps, but I think this time I'm just going to do it now. And then we'll just continue on with our 70% warm gray. much else to add except for the dioxazine purple hue so maybe we do want some more of this in here so lightly pop in a little bit more we did add a little bit of the black cherry so we can do that Why not? So I'm just going to pop this in the darker areas a little bit here. Sure as we go. I want to just see what we're at here. So this little bit of, mm, it's really annoying, that watercolor. different than the other side though so finish to it that the prismas just don't like. Oh, that's so cool. Okay. I didn't know that that would work for just recording. Huh. 
someone just subscribed to the channel and it popped up. I don't know if you guys were able to see that too or if it was just me. I thought that was only when I was streaming if somebody subscribed, but uh, hmm. interesting. Cool, cool. Okay. little bit in frame as well. Um, okay, I do think, I changed my mind, I do want to put some of the dioxins in purple hue here, but I want to put up on the other side. So just like on the back here. Seemed a little too quick anyway, so I assume he's not done. Oops, a little too hard there. So we can blend that out a little bit, we'll just darken it up. Okay, so that's the black cherry. Let's go in with the dark purple. And same as before, we're just lightly going to go over the black cherry with the dark purple. blend those colors together. I'm going to darken it up here just to really blend the red and blues together. What was that? Oh, email. My computer makes random ding sounds and it still trips me out. I'm still getting kind of used to it. Max are confusing. There's a lot of things I like about it and a lot of things that I'm just like, I don't understand. Okay. I think that's good there. I don't want to make it too dark. So let's come in with our seashell pink and I think I'm just going to leave everything as is. So I'm going to go ahead and burnish with this. So I'll bring this down a little bit on some of these areas, I think, need a little bit of a highlight here. Let's do the same on this side. You can't tell too much, but you can tell a little bit. It definitely lightens it up a little bit, at least. Plus side, this little bit of uh, watercolor that got on his uh, wing here actually kind of makes sense, so I'm I'm okay with that. I think I've got this little part there, whatever that is. Okay, so there is a one wing totally done. Unless we decide to change the inside and add some reddish colors, but I'm I'm still on the fence on that. I don't know if I want to or not. Hello. <laughs> I don't know what he's doing. Okay. Um, I am like dying to color the body, but I think we're going to wait and do the other wing. 
because if I leave it, my plan is to record the last part right after this, but just on the off chance something pops up because something always does. If I leave it, I don't want the wings to end up looking different. I would rather the body look slightly different than the wings because that would make sense. So we need to continue with the wings. Okay. So we're going to focus on the kind of behind part and then we'll do the rest of it. And we're going to follow the exact same steps. So let's go into the dioxazine purple hue. It's so tiny. And then coming in just on the left side, with this line that separates the front part of the wing from the back. We're just going to go along that and fade it out. I'm not going too dark or anything yet, and I do want to leave kind of some of these little line bits. The veins, I don't know what else to call them. I'm sure there is a proper word, but know what it is. This part here, we want this to be in shadow as well. I'm bringing it down a ways on the parts where Kirby has those kind of lines really close together to kind of show shadow. And we're also going to continue our shadow down here. And fade that out as well. I'm also going to shadow this bit. I'm like really cringing the more I see areas with watercolor over them. Like this part, for example. Uh, why? getting there with the shadows. It's kind of hard to pick out which way shadows should be and where they should be. But 
but I'm not too worried because this guy is pretty interesting enough as it is, so he'll still look pretty bomb ass even if we don't have shadows in the right places. Oh, this pencil is just oh, hurting my hands. I'm too lazy to grab tape. My uh, pencil extender doesn't properly fit. Like, I don't even know where it is. It's in the box. Nope. Okay, it's, well, it's MIA and it doesn't fit properly. So, I don't know what I did with it. Uh oh. Hmm. <laughs> It doesn't look really neat. This is kind of like the underpainting, so these shadows don't have to look really perfect because we're going to go over and kind of accentuate them a little bit more. Um, I think this is kind of fire coming off of here, but let's color it dark anyways. I don't know if there's anywhere else where I think needs shadow. Okay. I think we're good there for now. Let's maybe go in with our black. Actually, let's go in with the 70% cool gray first, because I think that's what we did last time. on this bit first here. Finding it a little bit less stressful to color in sections for this because if I focus on like the whole thing it like, I don't know, makes me anxious a little bit so let's just slow down here. One little bit at a time. We'll get there. Yeah, if you guys have any uh, recommendations for like a good extender pencil where you don't have to tape the end of your pencil to get a normal size pencil to fit in it, that would be lovely. Because mine I have to tape the ends, otherwise it doesn't stay in there. I like, I can tip it over and it just falls out. I mean, I, if it was a cheap one, I can't, I probably paid like, mm, maybe like five dollars for it, if that. It's like ballparking it because it was forever ago, but... Let's create a shadow coming along behind this guy, his neck here. We want that to stand out. I mean, it will already because we're going to do something a little bit, uh, 
little bit different with that, with the reds, like we were talking about in, I think, the first part I kind of explained the plan, and I can't remember, it was way too long ago, but I thought I had dark it off. Mm. Computer difficulties. Darken some of this stuff up. And this whole thing is for the most part going to be purple anyway, so we can darken it up with the purple and then add the black in. I'm not burnishing anything. It's probably okay for now. So let's go in with our black. So in around here, I'm just gonna black that out. As well as the darker areas underneath his, uh, this thing. Kind of black those out as well a little bit. I think that looks okay. Okay, this will have reds in it, so we don't need to focus too much on that right now. Let's just focus on this, uh, these darker bits down here. I want to make sure everything is kind of... coated with the um, dioxazine purple hue. Maybe add a little bit here. And we're keeping this mostly to the shadows. Not gonna get a kitty at the door. Two seconds. I'm going to guess Miko. Oh, oh, it was Lilo. Hi, baby. Usually she meows when she scratches. I thought you were the baby. Burnish this as well with the blender pencil.
just slightly blend out a little bit of that. This didn't come out quite as purple as the last side did. blue here. Okay, and then let's kind of start in on the rest of this. So we're going to go in with the 70% warm gray. Just gonna go over what we already have down for the shadows so far. I think just the enthroning or dioxazine purple hue. It's a mouthful. I'm going to do the same thing I did with the other wing and just kind of go with it and not overthink it. So we might bring this out a little bit here, but we're still going to try and fade it off relatively smooth. For the most part, I like to just do the shadows and then just start adding our next darkest colors and constantly just fade it out because I find it's a lot easier. It helps you burnish without really thinking that you're doing much layering, even though you are. So it kind of like tricks your mind because when I think layering, I'm just like, ugh. But doing it this way, it doesn't even really seem like layering, so I don't really think about it. But I forgot about this bit here. But it's okay. Then it also kind of just automatically lays the colors for you for the most part without you having to think too much about it. So that's always nice too. I think this needs to have a little shadow there. good for now. Let's go in with our black and pick out our darker shadows. So I think definitely in here. Underneath the fire for sure. The way the fire really pops I suppose. These little bits up here I want to be fairly dark too, just kind of right near the tops.
make it too dark. Already at 30 minutes, and now I'd like to get this one finished though, so let's press on. Let's clean up our black cherry now. And we're just going to continue doing the same thing. I'm just going to bring this in kind of out from the shadows. Definitely want to get a good coating of it in here. So this is just going to kind of help blend our colors together. It's going to help transition those blues to the redder colors. Oops, sorry. Do it again. Trying to decide which side of this I want the uh, highlight on. I'm thinking the outside. Oh, I really don't know what I'm doing here. This one is way more confusing than the other one just because there's so much more open space. I really struggle with that. I never really know what to do to fill it up without it looking kind of silly. So hopefully it ends up looking okay. If not, you guys can fire me. <laughs> I think 
I'm just going to color this part in pretty dark because that's like a watercolor part and seems to be working. Let's add a little bit of our dark cherry in here too. And then for this part, I'm just going to go in with the dioxazine purple hue. I'm not going to bother burnishing it because it's not going to work anyway. Okay, all of my wrist hurts. Okay, um, so a little bit more here I want to put in. This is looking a little too purple. I want it to look more, a little more red. Okay. Um, I think next is the dark purple. Oops, wrong way. end up being more of like a two hour one. Try and save as many highlights as I can down here, or at least not burnish as much as I can, so that way we've still got some lighter areas. And then other than that, I'm just going to come in over top of the black cherry with the dark purple, bring it out. Just make sure we don't have like a whole lot of big spaces of just paper. This one right here, specifically. So maybe bring this up a little bit. Create our own little line here. I think this is about the best we can do. Hopefully it works out. Um, so I don't want to make it too dark. I think we're okay there. Hopefully. So just a little bit more just in case. Just lightly. Fine. Let's go in with our seashell pink and we are going to start burnishing. We are going to try and save some highlights on this bit of the wing here. For this bit down here, we'll just burnish completely with the seashell pink.
a stitch at the door. Come on, bud. I think getting down here, we probably won't need to save any highlights. Um, aside from this, we'll save a highlight here. But in this area here, probably won't need any. Apologies for the shadow. You know, there's a whole other shelf over there. You could go lay on it. Lastly, we can switch to the eggshell and we can pop this in. Oops. On our highlighted areas. And just anywhere else you think needs to be maybe lightened up or needs a little extra blending. Okay, I think that's it for this part. It definitely took a lot longer than I was planning. So that's kind of an overview on what he's looking like right now. focused. So that is what it's looking like for now. I'm actually really happy with that. Still on the fence about the wings, but I was thinking one nice thing, because his head is probably going to be like this color, so that'll kind of make his head stand out a little bit from the wings too. So 
you know, once we get his head done, we'll kind of see if it still looks good or not, and then go from there. But I'm definitely liking how he's looking. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this too. Um, and hopefully it turns out good. <laughs> so we will for sure have at least one other part, maybe a fifth one, we'll have to see. I'm always really bad with uh, estimating how long things are going to take, as you can tell. But we could get both wings done in, <laughs> in an hour. Or and then an hour and a half, and then it's more like two hours. So hopefully the rest of him doesn't take that long, but uh, it's probably gonna take about the same amount of time, I'm going to guess. So I will see you guys in part four. As always, I hope you're enjoying and take care. See you next time. Bye!